Okay, this is the uh, solar charge controller I got. It's a, a 20 amp model from All2 two, All two Solar. Got it off Amazon. Yeah, this is going to be a little bit tough for me because I'm large and uh, I have a hard time fitting in here. What I'm going to do first is take the uh, cover off the solar prep box. Done some research ahead of time and I think is going to happen is when I take that off. There's going to be two lines for the uh, roof solar specifically and they will go into this charge controller on the left where it says pv the bottom and the orange bottom left it's a positive negative which should come right out of that uh prep box uh, as far as mounting there's no no space on the left side of that nothing over it obviously so i think i'm going to write on that board there's like a uh, screw in there already for an access panel uh, if you see up on the top <laughs> I'm probably get my head in here. The screw up on top of this access panel area here. There's some space behind. So I think I'm going to go directly into that. Okay, I got the uh, verter prep box cover off. And I thought there was one screw. Uh, you can kind of see on the, left, on the left there. One screw on the box. And there's actually two if you see the other one on the right. Um, near that uh, yellow wire going behind the wall um, that was hidden by the access panel to the front which has two screws to the screws out and kind of jiggle it around eventually it pops out and it allows you to get the solar prep box off the other screw for the solar prep box now inside uh, this is labeled portable solar which is the same thing as Make sure it says that. Yeah, portable solar positive and battery positive. So that jack on the front with the uh, with these Rubicons is a portable solar jack on the front of the frame near the battery box. Um, that is also running through. I guess it's hooked together. The portable and the roof both hooked together. That's my assumption right now because there's no other wires in this box um, except for the negatives. Which are also labeled portable solar and battery, both being negative. So what you have to do is attach those, uh, the red, the green, and the two blacks to the four posts and the solar charge controller. And then uh, test it at the end. I got a panel that just arrived today. I don't have everything, so what I'm going to do is put that panel. If I have to, just lay it on the roof, hook it up to the jack on the roof. And see what happens down here at the uh, controller. When I got that done. And at a later date I'll attach that 100 watt panel and the 200 watt panel that I have coming. I'll attach those both to the roof and to the uh, roof mounted jack. And back. Um, went to put the bo box back on without thinking and the wires that for the charge control that have to come out. Obviously got to get through the box somehow and there's no access port or anything. So I just took some snips, cut up the sides and snapped it off. And I'll put some Gorilla Tape around there to take some of the sharpness off the edges. And I'll just run the wires out the right side of the box. Now these are the uh, two positive uh, wires coming out of the, the prep box. It's all copper. Uh, it's pretty heavy gauge too. It looks like it's probably at least 10 gauge. I think that's what they said it comes down from the roof. So that's good. That can handle up to like 30 amps. Which is uh, more than adequate. Probably five, six hundred uh, watts of solar could, could go over it, I think, if I'm doing the math right. Uh, so I'm going to attach these PV, the PV one, portable PV is going to the positive on here, battery there. Then I'll attach the two negatives. There's no power to the, from a panel or the battery right now. So I think after this, this is up and in place, I'm going to put the battery on and then attach a solar panel temporarily on the roof. All right, I got it up there. In hindsight now, what I strongly suggest is you put the panel back up behind the charge controller without putting the screws in. Attach one screw. I did the bottom left first. That'll give you the position on that board, on the backer board. Then take it off and attach the other three screws because this was a royal pain. Getting the other, uh, especially those back two, 
Took me probably 20 minutes just to get those two screws in. Not a lot of room here. Uh, they put the prep box a little bit more to the right. So you get the controller in to the left of the box. That would be a lot better because uh, then you can actually see the readout. This is going to be a hard time for me, I think. But we'll check it out in the end. See how easy or hard it is to read. Right, I'm out here on the tongue doing the wiring for the battery. Um, if he goes, this trailer is pre-wired at the factory. They give you uh, three each of the red and the black lines. There's two heavier gauge wires which are labeled battery that I believe are the uh, the uh, onboard power coming from the controller. And the other two lines, two black and two red, are, I, I believe, the solar jacks, the roof and the front jack here. Um, what I wanted to do was put a kill switch in that goes on the negative side um, so I can isolate this battery from the house. And I talked to the... talked. I got some information from the uh, people at the manufacturer and they said that the solar, they implied at least, so the solar lines coming in do not go to the converter. So therefore these two smaller red wires and the two smaller black wires should be separate. Should not pick up any voltage from the onboard energy system where the charger is. Um, I'll test this all at the end. But uh, one last thing, it was this uh, battery has a BMS, battery management system. And uh, one... One of the things that BMS does is uh, protect the battery. Like when you plug a cell phone in, um, it'll automatically stop charging. The phone's intelligent, it can stop the charging to the uh, lithium battery in your phone when it reaches 100%. That's what this is supposed to do too, but I've read online in some uh, RV forums that it's uh, not to trust that. So what I want to do is isolate it with this kill switch. So that's a line on the black. I'll test everything on the end. I'll test it with just the solar independent and also I'll test it on the truck and also on shore power. Okay, I've got the two solar panels ready. This is a 200 watt panel from New Power. Um, what I decided to do, well, first of all, I want the aluminum frame panels, not the uh, flat flexible panels. Um, there's a lot of bad reviews about the flexible panels. Uh, I'm not here to defend one or the other. Uh, I thought this was a safer option for me, and actually these are just a little bit cheaper, even with the cost of the uh, brackets. Um, using these uh, ABS brackets, what I've done, each of them has two screw holes. I've also used this uh, 3M BHB tape, which is an uh, industrial tape they use in auto manufacturing to keep, keep car parts together. Uh, this one has a total of eight brackets on it. I'm going to also use that BHB tape under this edge here to attach it to the roof, roof of the RV. And I'm going to go over the top of each of these brackets with a two inch turnabond tape to hold it down from the top. So it'll be held on twice. Each bracket will be held on twice. Um, you know, I chose the aluminum frame also because uh, the heat concern. If the panel gets hot, it can lo lose power. Um, these uh, aluminum frame they have a little separation between the roof and the panel, and they tend not to get uh, overheated as much. I had them on my last RV, and they never overheated. I also got this 100 watt, uh, geez, was a rich solar panel, so I have a total of 300. And one thing, if you use this method, is these brackets make the, the width and the length of the panels a lot greater than they are just the panels. Um, with that roof on the uh, 1200RK, that's pretty small. So I've measured and I'm going to be able to fit these on there, but it's something you got to consider when you're doing this is how you're going to place those. And, and if you wanted to put on more wattage than this 300, it's going to begin, begin to become a problem where to fit the panels. Okay, you got both panels on the roof, the 100 and 200. Uh, look, see, there's going to be good contact, at least on the 200. I'll check the 100 after. I put these in position, uh, straighten them out so they look uh, like they're aligned with the trailer. I drew lines and crayon. 
at the edge of these uh, brackets. So I'm going to do is take the backing off that VHB tape and uh, try to put the panel down where those lines are and make sure it stays, stay, stays straight. And afterwards I'll connect to the jack up front after I got the panels on. Right now I'll go on around and put it on the Eternabond. This is some old stuff I had. It's a little bit dirty there. But I'll get all the brackets best I can. Here I got to get had to get up on the uh, sealant. So uh, I'll do what I can here with that VHB tape. I mean, I I put it down. I didn't have an exact right position. So I had to move and I could pick it up easily. It just kind of stuck a little bit. But once I got in position, I pushed it down. And it's really sticking. We got the one. I don't know. I don't want to tug on it. <laughs> Ruin what I just did. But I run and uh, push them all down. Push all the brackets down. Push the edges down there where the VHB tape is. Seems to be uh, working out really well right now. Now the hundred watt. I put that up there too, and uh, it's got a little bit of uh, unevenness where the brackets touch the roof. So I'm going to double up every bracket with another layer of VHB tape before I put it down. So if I got any problems, I'll go around and immediately put down the the Eternabond tape on the outside to help hold that bracket down to those dries. But this is working out pretty well. Pretty happy with it. It ended up being easier to work with than I than I thought. I thought I would get the bracket down and not be able to move or the solar panel down and not be able to move it, and I could. As long as you don't press it down down solid, you can move it. Pops up. These are called the Y branch connectors. Each one of these goes to each panel, each side, the positive and the negative. Then these ends go into the jack up on top. That's an MC4 jack. And what I did, I don't know if it's overkill, is I bought a 20 amp fuse for the end of one of these. So, uh, should be protected. I'm going to plug these in and uh, go down and check and see if we have power off the panels. It's a pretty gray day, so I think I'll be lucky to get an amp. The max output is uh, about 16 amps, so we'll see. Well, there it is. It's working. I'm getting uh, a little over an amp down at the charge controller. Um, I'll come back later when I get some some more turn bond and uh, put a little bit on each of those wires just to hold them against the roof, but uh, they're primarily under the panels, each of them, so they're not going anywhere, but I'll tape them down. I think uh, we'll test on the end here. I guess right now I'll put in a comment. I'm gonna test it on short power. There's no power going to the uh, battery with the kill switch on off. I'll test the truck, hook up the truck and see if the same thing happens. But I'll put a uh, comment here if, if all's okay. All right, it's about a week later. I've decided to redo portions of my install, and I'm going to upload a second install video, show the changes I made. Um, on the first video, somebody that uh, knows a lot more about solar and 12 volt systems than me suggests that I put in this uh, disconnect switch. It was only 20 bucks. I, I'll put it in the description. Uh, that's supposed to protect protect the solar charge controller down below. And it's supposed to be waterproof. It's got a rubber seal around the edge there, and this little door that opens. And I can access it easily from uh, the side of the RV. Um, I didn't want to put it on its back because the water would pull up and probably wouldn't be waterproof. But uh, tomorrow I'm going to put on a Victron solar charge controller. And it's a lot better quality charge controller. I returned the other one and uh, it's got Bluetooth capability. So I'll go over that tomorrow after I install it. Okay, I got the new uh, Victron 30 amp charge, solar charge controller put in place. Um, put my old AGM, 100 amp hour AGM on the trailer temporarily, just as I go through the testing phase. Uh, after this, I'll go and, and uh, activate the app and see what we get in the app for the uh, for the battery and charger information. A few notes here. This is pretty heavy uh, for a charge controller. It's about three pounds, um, which feels good. I mean, it feels like a quality 
piece of equipment like it's supposed to be. It's supposed to be like the top of the line for this application. One thing I know, it, uh, on the bottom, the jacks, the uh, battery and PV jacks are reversed. And also, they put the positives on the outside and the negatives together in the middle. So you just got to be extra careful when wiring it. Uh, I don't think I've seen that see that layout before for the wiring. I'm doing this as a, uh, also, one thing for us, I'm doing this as a screen recording. So uh, I'll do what I can with it when I put in the video. But on the top, I'm in the status screen, and you can see that 8 watts, it's a really cloudy day right now, drizzling. So I'm only getting 8 watts, but you can see the voltage from the panels, where it says solar, voltage and amps, and the battery. Uh, I guess the MPPT controller is dropping down the voltage, so therefore you get a little bit more amps out of the uh, current at the battery. And it's in a float state. I recharged my AGM battery. Uh, before putting it on the trailer. I'm going to hook up the uh, Life Po 4 when I get down to where it's warmer. Uh, but for now, just sitting in the driveway, this is good. It's 100 amp hours, and surprisingly, the battery's in great shape. For It's been sitting for a couple of years. I'll go through the screen, so I'll go to the history screen. Just hooked it up. Um, so it's not showing a heck of a lot of history, but you can see there it's going to give you the... Uh, yield the uh, photovoltaic max and the voltage max and then the uh, on the battery same thing voltage max and minimum well not the same thing max and minimum voltage at the battery now i'll go into the trends trends page and uh again there's not a lot of history here but you can see the voltage is varying probably has this uh minor fluctuations in the light plus also the mppt charge controller is trying to maximize the uh, the efficiency of the panel to send the most power it can to the battery so it's not constant but uh that's about the extent of what i know about this i'm gonna play around with it some more but uh this thing's uh, freaking great and if you remember in the beginning of this video i was put in that other charge controller and then i couldn't even read the panel as i stuck my head in there and uh i can't even get my chest into that storage area um this is a lot better. I can sit in the RV on my phone and look at the different screens. All right, I have a lot to learn with this app, how to use it. Mm -hmm. A lot of stuff in here I'm not uh, proficient enough to even understand. But uh, we'll go, I found out how to get to the battery. You hit the top right, the little uh, settings button, the wheel. Go to battery. And what you can do here, this was or, automatically came up with what was called a rotary switch. where it, it indicates a bunch of different battery types. I clicked on uh, user defined and put an AGM spiral cell. Again, this is an old battery. I'm not particularly worried about it, but I think that's the appropriate one for an AGM. Um, there's a lot in here. Definitely recommend this uh, charge controller and this app for this. It's so much better than trying to read the screen. You get so much more information. All right. Take care, everybody.